Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa and now to a first major conversation. Uh, barely three weeks after President Mohamed Buhari signed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2022 into law, a federal high court sitting in Umwahia, the Abia State Capital, has annulled or had nullified the section, controversial section 84, subsection 12 of the Act and ordered the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami S.A.N., to delete it. I recall that President Muhammad Buhari had, while signing the amended Electoral Act on February 25 this year, um, said that he would approach the National Assembly to amend that provision, that is Section 84, subsection 12, on the ground that it violated the Constitution, delivering judgment on Friday in a suit filed by Wan Nduka Edede of the Action Alliance, which sought the nullification of the said section of the Act. The court presided over by Justice Evelyn Ayadike declared that the said section of the Electoral Act um, a main electoral act which was uh, passed was inconsistent with sections 66 sub 1 f sections 107 sub 1 f 137 sub 1 f and uh, 182 sub 1 f of the 1999 constitution and it was consequently uh, unconstitutional invalid illegal null void and of no effect now if you we can track back in time on tuesday march 1 the nigerian senate had disclosed that it had received a letter uh, from the president seeking an amendment of section that particular section 84 sub 2 um subsection 12 of the 2021 electoral act that has to do with appointed office holders resigning the appointment so that they can go either contest you know for elections or they can be delegates in their parties and he says that they cannot contest for an election or be delegates in their parties as long as they hold their offices but on wednesday march 9 the senate threw out the bill said to them by the president which was seeking to amend that controversial um section of the electoral act now the bill titled the bill for an act to amend the electoral act 2022 and for related matters 2022 was overwhelmingly rejected by senators a development that effectively stopped its second reading and it's ultimately its passage. Now, this led the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Aburka Malami, SAN, to announce a week later that the federal government would explore all available options, including taking the bill back, representing it uh, to the National Assembly. The second option he talked about was uh, uh, going to court and exploring the law. And the third option he talked about was accepting the fate and going to what the National Assembly had done. Well, the federal government isn't linked to this particular suit in any way, but this development, according to commentators, will come as a relief to it. Now, there have been various reactions from various legal eggheads with opinions going both ways, but we're glad to say we have joining us this morning a lawyer, Leonard Anyogo. He joins us live from Abuja. Uh, Ms. Anyogo, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Good morning, um uh, thank you for having me this morning. Fantastic. Um, what are your thoughts um, on this this move by uh, this ruling by court? Which which uh, what is your interpretation of this? Of course, the court and the trial judge has given the reasons uh, why this cannot go on, saying it's at variance with the constitution. What's your take on this? Well, um, for me, and based on the con the, the constitution of practice as, uh, in Nigeria, that talks about the three arms of government: the legislative arm. The executive arm and the judiciary. Um, you also recall that the judiciary is charged with the responsibility of interpreting the statutes or our laws or conventions that is brought before the court. Um, let us get that one very clear. Of course, um, there have been misreactions on the judgment of the Federal High Court in Umuahia, deleting Section 84 sub 12. Um, that talks about um, resigning, political appointees resigning before contesting for election. Now, that is just the court of first instance. That is the federal high court. And that decision can be appealed to the court of appeal and up to the Supreme Court. And personally, I want, um, I'm of the opinion, and, and, and I, I stand very firmly to say that I would like to have the Supreme Court pronouncement on that particular judgment. Um, you know, when laws are made, you ask yourself questions. What is the intent? What is the intention of the lawmakers? What do they say to guard against? Now, 
for you to remain in office as a political appointee and still running the election, would that conflict with your duties um, holding that office? Is that the reason why that uh, particular uh, law was passed? Remember that that law was just passed recently. And I expected that Mr. President or the presidency, uh, if they had a misgiving, there was no need for them to have signed that uh, uh, electoral act. They would have taken it back to the National Assembly and um, presented their opinion. But shortly when the, uh, the, law, the bill was signed to law by Mr. President, the presidency wrote a letter immediately to the National Assembly for that amendment of that section. And somebody, someone will say, uh, why the haste? What is the, what is the reason? Are some government appointees in this present administration going to be affected by such decisions that want to run, off, uh, run for political office? Of course, the obvious answer is yes. And um, another uh, uh, angle to it is that the way the judgment came, it was so fast, it was so precise. I am a legal practitioner. I'm on my way to court this morning. I know the procedure it takes. So these are the agitations. But we do not need to ridicule the judgment. If you have any grievance against any judgment, you go upstairs. This, in this instance, it's supposed to the Court of Appeal first to test whether the judgment delivered by um, his lordship, uh, uh, Justice Evelyn, is in tandem with the law. Of course, my, I had my, my learned friend, um, Father of SN, and it's of the opinion that the, the, the judge must have erred in, in fact and in error in, in law when he stated that um, the, 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 the sections of the constitution referred to by, by his lordship does not cover political appointees. And, and, I, and I, I think um, I, I want to go with that. But just like I said, I want this judgment uh, to be tested at the Court of Appeal and eventually at the Supreme Court. Okay. Um Saliana uh, you also have the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubo Kamalami, saying that uh, uh, the government will carry out a ruling, uh, I mean, ordering the repeal of that section 84, subsection 12, as it is. So what, what does this mean? Well, um, if I understand clearly, uh, the federal government, through the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, it's an interested party in this matter. Um, from the onset, from the fact I just said that the amendment was sent to the National Assembly, which was uh, rejected. Remember that for the first time, I, I felt that um, the APC dominated um, National Assembly will go with Mr. President. But for the first time, they disagreed openly. And that shows that um, it was a bipartisan um, rejection of that amendment. Uh, so there have been accusations that, of course, the the office of the AG, of course, and the presidency is interested in amendment. Of course, it's an open uh, secret. But to me, I keep saying that once you don't follow due process, or there's a seeming like some analysis. Leonardo Ayogo, are you there, please? Okay, uh, we'll try to get back to Leonardo Ayogo, and of course, uh, um, take his expert analysis. Very interesting times. And this is, like he says, uh, a, a test case for for our judiciary. Um, uh, it is here, and he is absolutely right when he says it's their responsibility to interpret the Constitution and the laws. Um, of course, the Constitution is there. Um, it can be amended through a legislative process. It's not other, uh, like other countries where it is amended or set by the judiciary. But in terms of interpretation of the letter and spirit of the constitution and the laws, the judiciary plays the role. Um, it's interesting. Eluna uh, Ayogo, are you back on the line, please? Now, one of the okay. things that uh, I think that he's mentioned in, in all of this is very important. He said that uh, you have the three arms of government. Of course, interpretation is yeah. totally the responsibility of the judiciary. But he also mentioned the fact that sometimes you look at you need to look at the intent. What's the intention of whose interest is it at this point of time? Now, he's also also made reference to the fact that it is an open secret. It's no longer, I mean, it's an open secret. And so when you say something is open and a secret at the same time, it's such a contradiction. Well, however, that 
that's what it is that the Attorney General and of course the federal government is interested in this particular you know amendment of the Constitution he tells a lot you know moving forward but let's see how all of this pans out he said that he would actually like the Supreme Court to make a you know um, a pronouncement a judgment on this and of course we know that the Supreme Court is the highest court of the, la the law and the land and whatever I says you know stands supreme and final but uh, we would see that uh, w what would happen with interested parties like you had already mentioned you have um, several persons who are reacting their different uh, interpretation and reaction to this particular one but at the end of the day um, the most important thing the intention would always be question and whose interest are we doing this for let's also also forget that you have the APC on this other hand uh, still grappling with the convention the 20 um, on the 26th of March so uh, at, at, at this point in time there's a lot that's going on yes and in the political space where you have several persons who are public office holders who are contesting for um, you know of uh, a political office you also not want to take out the issue of having the chairmanship at, at this point in time where some persons have said uh, uh, especially for the APC between the Niger state governor and his counterpart, uh, the fact that they are still members of, of, of I mean, they are still governors, and the constitution has actually stated that, you know, very expressly, even though you also have different interpretation. But it's very interesting. It's yes, a democracy yes, that we yes, live indeed. in. Yes, indeed. I, I, I think, I think um, also we, we, we can also look at the, um, the suspected intention of, of a... Uh, the National Assembly members. You, you, you're seeing what he called a bipartisanship, you know, in 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 this whole amendment of the 1990 of the Electoral Act, sorry, and uh, uh, in this 2022 amendment, and we've seen bipartisanship. Whereas, you know, we have uh, two major parties in the National Assembly. You have the APC, you have the PDP, and both of them are meant to vote on along party lines you know this is what we believe in but we've seen bipartisanship on one side national assembly members both apc and pdp are together on the demands that they had made or the changes they were trying to bring to the constitution to the electoral act you look at the first um uh, the first paper, the first document that was sent to the president, the first amendment, which he, he refused to sign. Um, you look at the clause, controversial clauses on direct primaries, for instance. Um, you saw also a bipartisanship coming from the governors, you know, of both political parties across the country. They were all in one voice saying, we reject this um, direct primary clause. And they've also not uh, looked favorably on this, uh, on some other things that have come uh, to play. So you can see that you have the National Assembly members wanting to, you know, not to ensure that they don't have certain persons, um, uh, you know, ex ex wielding power against them. And a lot of them want to return. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them want to come. But I'm told we have a guest back on the line. Uh, Leonard Ayogo, are you there, please? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, we, we, we lost you at a point, uh, but there was the, you were making a, a, a point before we lost you. So can you quickly conclude so we ask you a next question, please? No, no, I was just summarizing that this judgment um, is a bit contentious, on the, on, it depends on the angle you look at it, and I'm of the opinion that this judgment should be tested at the Court of Appeal and ultimately at the Supreme Court to see whether political appointees are actually covered by Section 66 and other relevant sections of the 99 Constitution in terms of um, um, those to resign before election. And of course, there's been agitation looking at the political significance of this judgment. Because the National Assembly, in their wisdom, um, felt that if you are contesting for election and you are holding an appointment office, you should resign and concentrate on your campaigns. So the reason behind that um, amended um, electoral act is key to, sustain, to the sustenance of our democracy. So I believe that um, the judgment should be tested up to the Supreme Court. All right, and Leonard Ayogo, if, if we track back to March 7, uh, a federal high court in Abuja that day barred the president, Mohamed Buhari, and the attorney general of the federation and the Senate president from tampering with the newly amended Electoral Act 2022. I'm talking about uh, Milord, the Honorable Justice Nyango Kaur, the federal high court in Abuja, who ruled on an ex parte application by uh, the opposition People's Democratic Party. He said the Electoral Act having become valid uh, a valid law could not be altered without following the due process of law. So how does this relate to what we're seeing coming from uh, Umwahia in the same, uh, from the same court, Court of Coordinated Jurisdiction? Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much. These courts are courts of coordinated jurisdictions. And that's why some analysts or uh, some Nigerians will believe that um, the court have become very controversial. With the greatest respect, I disagree with that. Because it's matters that are brought before the court that the court will adjudicate. 
But I always say that I believe that the court of appeal will set the record right. Because if you look at both the federal high court, Umwahi, and that of Abuja, um, you will see a situation where this court are a court of court jurisdiction. And if you want to interpret it to suit your own uh, whims and caprices, you say that you, you believe that um, the federal high court judgment in Umwahi uh, asking the federal government to delete session 84 sub 12 will not stand given the earlier pronouncement by Justice Sipo of the Federal High Court Abuja. Mm. So that's why I said the Court of Appeal will be of, um, will be of help in this uh, scenario. Okay, but, but, but can, 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 we, can, we, can we... Some people are saying, some people are saying that uh, because uh, Justice Ian Yeko, uh, said that the, 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 the electoral act in two cannot be, be amended without uh, these people named, the Senate President, Mr. President himself, and the Attorney General, following the, the due process of the law, some are arguing that you know that what has happened now with this individual going to court is part of that due process of the law. Do you agree with that that school of thought? Well, um, if you look at the parties to the federal court judgment in Umwaya, that was brought by a chieftain of an action alliance. Yes. Um, uh, when we look at when you look at the local standing before now, someone will not say what is his interest in the case, but the court has decided severely that he has the uh, competence to institute that actions. Uh, being a, a chieftain of a political party. But what I would like to know, let us even uh, leave law a bit this morning and look at the political significance of this judgment. It shows that if, the ju if, sorry, if this uh, act is allowed to stand, that means so many persons in government, both at the state and the federal level, even at the local government level, should resign and concentrate in, in their campaigns. But you will see a situation where somebody wants to run office, you want to stay in the office, you want to run for an office, uh, maybe as a minister or as a commissioner, I want to stay in the office in 30 days, and um, the, the question is that when someone is running for an office and he stays in office, does he concentrate in his job? Um, um, does he deliver governance? Because I believe that after politics should come governance. But when the, when the greatest respect, we tend to play politics all through. So let us look at the reason. What is the rationale behind that decision to amend that electoral um, uh, act? I think that is very key. If we don't look at it uh, critically, we'll be, we'll be more legalistic. Okay. Um, to me, as a, yeah. To me, as a lawyer, I think the the the, the court of appeal will critically look at that session. Whether political appointees can be classified as those people um, that is contemplated by session, by the relevant sessions of the 1999 constitution as amended. All right, but uh, let's also look at this as well. I mean, uh, we understand the judicial proceedings, and we at you. It's a good thing that you're saying that you're uh, looking forward to the court of appeal and the Supreme Court. You know, having to. Uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, judgment need to be challenged by the appeal on the Supreme Court, of course. It gets to the Supreme Court and then it becomes final. But don't you think that the purpose of uh, this would have actually been, uh, you know, been forfeited at the end of the day? Understanding that were the times where political parties are about to have their primaries and elections. And so if you look at the process of the judiciary, I mean, it follows a lot of process. So at the end of the day, we probably might still have this case in court and then the elections would have happened. 2023 would have been here and it would have been of no use at the end of the day. Well, um, if you look at the speed at which that judgment was obtained or was delivered, it shows that it's, um, it's, it's more of a political expediency because ordinarily um, um, court cases take a while. But that decision, it, it, it was filed, the briefs were exchanged, it was delivered with the speed of light that um, some analysts would believe that is unusual. Now, because the primaries are here, that decision can equally, that speed it was taken or it was, uh, that was used at the federal high court can still be used at the court of appeal and up to the Supreme Court. We can do that. Because election matters are given very special uh, attention by the courts. Um, so I believe that this decision can still be taken in the next one or two months. Because as it stands so, the federal high court is not the highest court of the land. And it will be very um, suspicious if we leave that decision at the federal high court, because now we're trying to build, um, we're, we're trying to build consensus, we're trying to build faith in our uh, in our democracy. So let us go upstairs and let the Supreme Court have a bite on that decision, because otherwise it will be seen as if it was an ambush, and I don't want the judiciary to be seen as such. So I believe the solution to this. Uh, 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 situation, contentious, contentious situation is that it's to go to court of appeal at the court of, uh, as a court of superior record or something. But, but you also would agree with me that, uh, like you have also mentioned, that 
there would be no adjudication of any case. I mean, the courts will not adjudicate over any case or, until it's been brought to it. So do you see, I mean, this particular um, issue being contended? Do you see, do you, see um, you know, further steps being taken, uh, you know, approaching the appeal court and the Supreme Court? Yes, the, the National Assembly can do that because given their body language, given the actions they have taken, given the fact that they rejected the plea by the presidency to amend that act, they should go upstairs. They should go, they can, even, even as they are not joined, because I've not actually seen the parties to that uh, prior court judgment. They can join as an interested party and challenge the court at the court of appeal. For me, the way forward is to go to court of appeal because you cannot derive any de decision without taking due process. You go upstairs. That is the legal means of challenging any decision. Now, uh, it looks like the federal government is in a haste to implement that judgment. Of course, the, 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 the office of the AG said they are going to do that. So, if you're not comfortable with that, as a body, as an institution, the National Assembly, or any other interested person can challenge that decision to the Court of Appeal. But just like I said, what is the reason for asking political appointees to resign so so number of days before they can contest election? Maybe Nigerians are not looking at that aspect. I think that there's, 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 um, there's, there's, there's something for us to look at in that aspect. It helps in governance. So what should we be looking at? We should be looking at the reason why uh, the amendments took place in the first place. Why you are asking political appointees to resign so so number of days before, or to part, before they can participate in their convention or the congresses or to be elected. The reason to me, I think it's not far fetched it's for us to allow governance. If you, because if you, as a minister, for instance, you want to be a governor, because that's where most of them go, or you want to be a senator, and you are still in office, you will not concentrate. The campaign is very stressful. They're going for vote and all that. So that is why they said, if you are interested in political, if you want to contest political office, resign, so I can concentrate in your campaigns. I think that is the reason that I think it has some value, it has some take for us to look at as Nigerians. Lyoda Yogo, what does this say? Um, have, have you seen a situation like this before um, where the National Assembly, which is the, the Parliament of Nigeria, uh, representing the people, um, passes a law or an act, you know, a, a bill, and it's signed into law, and that a court now says, no, delete A, B, C. Um, is, is that healthy for our democracy? Well, um, if you look at Section 1 sub 1 and sub 3 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, it talks about any law, because that is the supreme law of the land. That's the goal of the law, the Constitution. So any law that is inconsistent with the provision of the Constitution, to that extent, such laws is, um, is not avoid. You know that the Electoral Act is, um, the electoral act is, is an inferior uh, law to the Constitution. So the judgment well, it's to that extent that the Section 84 sub of the Amended Electoral Act is inconsistent with Section 16, Section 137, and um, other relevant sections of Section 107 of the Nigerian Constitution. So it, it's to the level of the inconsistent, as found by the judge, as found by the court, that that judgment or that um, amended sections of the Electoral Act was set aside. So it's to the level of inconsistency. Okay, so, so that's why. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what you're saying basically is that. Um, um, no, you know what, what, what the, 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 the Federal High Court in Umoha has done is, 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 is known to, to democracy, it's part of democracy, that it's yes, also yes. Is healthy for democracy to also not just take what the National Assembly is saying, hook, line, and sinker, but to test it in the light of the Constitution. And I believe the word that uh, was used by Boka Malami the first time uh, Federal High Court of uh, Justice Yanko passed uh, it, its, its, its ruling was um, uh, ultra virus. So, so, so therefore, should we be looking at how we feel about, about this? You know, you talked about looking at the motive behind it and then the import of not resigning as the, the new act you know, requires on our democracy. But should it be about what we think is right? Or should it be about what the constitution says? And if it's about what the constitution says, then are we not just blowing hot air? Are what? you there, Leonard? Are you there, please? I think uh, we, we've lost. Connection. We've lost the connection here, here. We've lost that. We'll try and get back to Leonard. But um, an interesting point is made that the constitution is clear. And that anything that is adverse to that constitution ultimately is no void and of no effect. And that's what uh, the trial judge at uh, the Federal High Court in Umuahia 
um, did say, the judge in that suit rather. And uh, what Abu Raka Malamidi also just said that um, the clause introduced you know, by the nationals in that new act uh, on qualification, this qualification criteria, where ultra-virus uh, um, in the constitution, by importing a, a blanket restriction uh, and disqualification on serving political office holders, of which uh, they are constitutionally accorded protection. You know, so, you know, I was hoping he would tell us some more about that. But, you know, maybe people should be looking at, at, at amending the Constitution, not the Electoral Act, because the Electoral Act cannot overcome the Constitution. Yeah, a very valid point. But we also need to understand that, I mean, uh, it's actually part of the process. Maybe that wouldn't have been accepted because you understand the interests involved at the end of the day. You've talked about cases where you have, you know, uh, uh, you have two dominant parties, at the National Assembly and Senate. In some cases, you have both parties coming together on some issues, that means they are aligning, and because it's their interests, that's what politics is about. And in some cases, you find out that when interest is not reflected or protected, then they begin to go apart. At the end of the day, everyone would begin to lobby and protect their interests, and that's what it's about. But the laws were actually not thrown from the sky. The laws were made. This constitution is a written constitution, and you know it was not thrown from the sky. We didn't pick it somewhere. It has to follow. So I feel I feel like whatever is being put out there is challenging the entire law. You know, initially the process to amending the constitution and ensuring that we have good governance. This is a practice that's been going on for a very long time where you have political office holders. And in most cases, you still find the fact that, you know, the uh, incumbency, the power of being dominant in a space would always play, you know, always, you know, play at every election and you but, can't take But, but the constitution out. is clear, you know, and this might give them 30 days, 30 days. So, so, I mean, what are we talking about? You know, sentiments don't win arguments. The law in black and white on paper is what we should. No, no. So, so, in, yes. in, if, so, if so, we talk so about the, even the lawyers who are coming out like uh, Ade Borua, Ebola uh, Ebola, and Femi Falano, I do not know uh, what they would say to the fact that the constitution is clear on these issues. But we will continue and this conversation. And the big question would be, how much day. have we upheld that part of the constitution? Well, that's the much that we can take. Thank you so much, Leonard and Yago, uh, for being part of you know the conversation. He's a legal practitioner. We'll take a break right now. When we return, we're heading straight to our second conversation. Please stay with us.